there is a specific reason as to why God created us, each one of us. And uh, by the end of the day, what God expects is we do whatever he expects of us and finish. Jesus at some point the book of John says I came to do the work that my father gave me and I came to finish that work. I want to read Colossians 4.17 Colossians 4.17 uh, Colossians 4.17 Paul is talking to one of the the disciple he mentored. Paul speaks to one of the disciples he mentored in Colossians 4.17. The Bible says, And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord, thou, thou fulfill it. So he's talking to one of the ministers of the gospel. He says, whatever that you received from God as an assignment, what God sent you to do on earth, he says, make sure that you will fulfill it. Make sure that you fulfill it. Uh, there is a kind of conscience we need to have a kind of conscience or we should be conscious of number one why we exist on earth here why, do I, did you, why are you here somebody must have a, an answer to that why am I on earth What did God intend for me to be here? Uh, and this, this kind of question don't, many of us don't ask ourselves. We just go through life blindly, uh, not knowing what God is expecting. As long as you know God is there and he's the one who created you, then you know that there is a purpose for which he created you. Uh, and, and every day you can know we are now finishing the year from the time the year began until now you can know whether you are really on the track of what God expects of you you can know am I what exactly and the way to learn what God brought you here for is the way to learn is by coming to church like this, the more you hear the word of God, the more you can realize why you exist. Jesus will say in chapter 6 of the book of Matthew verse 33. Maybe we can read that part. It's a bit important. Luke 6, 33. If you begin from verse 24 until verse 32, it talks about what people give a lot of attention to. What people give a lot of attention to. Like the, the, the attention they give so much to is what they eat, what they drink, what they put on as clothes. And then the other bit is, where do I sleep? I think the biggest. So after you get that, that's what is called basic needs. Then you're also looking for other things that is all about you. But he says in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So the first thing that somebody must Engage my mind is his or her mind is is the purpose of God, the will of God. What exactly does God expect of me? 
what exactly that God expect of me and well, why am I leaving because one day I will leave this, this world one day I will leave this world in how, how am I leaving this even as you are asking that question you know if you continuously hear the word of God you will come to realize what exactly in whichever whatever you are be it in your family what does God expect you to do if you're in this church, what does God expect you to do? If you are at the marketplace, what does God expect? Every one of us have responsibility somewhere. Every one of us have responsibility somewhere. And, uh, and, uh, and, and much of our work is also of the work that God expects us to do. We are helped to do that work by the very church where you are. The purpose that you fulfill, uh, the purpose that you are created for, number one, you are going to learn it by going to the church. I say that one. If the church is doing something, whatever the church is doing in, you get engaged in. Be it evangelizing, be it discipleship, be it a service like this. You, you, you get in and you help where you can. Whether you help through praying, whether you help through giving, whether you help by winning souls from wherever you are. So the big question is now, as I am here, in fact, the big one of the major reasons as to why we exist is to bring the lost to Christ. Utafuta wale ambao mepotea. And then we bring them to Jesus and then we help them to get the word of God. So there is there has to be a mindset with which you need to live this life. So not really struggling about how to hustle. The big question, excuse what to go listen to Swali, I want to come back. hustle. Una hustle. Magalini. Na una hustle ukifanya nini? Hustling is, if you, you, you look at that word hustling, it seems like I am struggling to get one, two, three things. That might be some, somebody's major listening. But I, I hardly hear people talk about uh, uh, how much they are engaging themselves in the things that God has called them to do. Or what God expects them. If you put him first, anything else will fall in place. Like what we read here. You seek the kingdom and righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto, unto you. All this shall be added unto you. So he's saying to Akipas, fulfill the things for which that God has created you on earth. The work that he gave you, accomplish it. Accomplish it. So, as we go to prayer today, I wanted us to pray that God will help us individually to fulfill his purpose. As a person, what is it? You know, as a minister of the gospel, I know what I was sent to do. But you also, as a person, whatever you are, the things God expects of you. If you don't know, you need to pray. It is difficult. It is a bit. It's a tragedy to live, to live life when you don't understand why God created you. It's a tragedy. Uh, it's a big mistake. If you are living and you don't know why. And if all you think is to eat, drink, and sleep. Eat, drink, sleep. <laughs> eat, drink, sleep. You just look by all means, whatever you can get, you put in the stomach. There has to be a big picture. A big picture. Where you literally fall in. And then you can... There's something that makes people fulfilled. Like for example, I... I am so fulfilled if I release the word of God. Uh, by the time I have done whatever I was called to do, like preaching. I think by the time I finish preaching, I just go and sleep. At I have peace. The things that has to give you fulfillment. Sometimes people think they will get fulfillment after they get a land, after they get a vehicle, after they build a place, after they get a job. Still there is no fulfillment. 
sometimes if you want to know how fulfilled you are, you look at after you go to, to the bed, how do you sleep there that night? Do you, sometimes people have, ask themselves serious questions when they, when they turn for the night as they think about their life, what they did today, last year, the day before. Somebody can feel it. Can you feel fulfilled? And this fulfillment only happens if you do what God is telling you to do. If you are in what is expected. Still inside you are very empty. <laughs> you, you, and at last you, you, you realize even as we continue learning the word of God, one of the things you're going to realize is uh, there is nothing impactful than helping somebody get to know God. Hmm? Although this one is, is, is after you have been matured in the things of God, you are going to realize this. There's nothing more fulfilling than getting people to know God. Nothing. If somebody can say after some times, when you arrived in my life, is when my life changed. And even God is a witness about it. I think that is, even in heaven, when you go and to meet God, you say, you know, I have already impacted so many people. God will not ask you how much you ate, what you did eat, what you slept, what the clothes you put on, how much you struggled. What did your work do to make people understand that Jesus is Savior. And how did they come to him and what was the last state of their life? What is the last state of their life after you met them? If somebody's life changed for good after you came into their life, wow. You have something. Anything you do should introduce people to God and his work. So, I don't want to speak so much, but I want us to pray. As a ministry, there's some work we need to fulfill. If you see me here at lunch hour, morning devotion, I'm trying to do what I'm called. And to pray for this city, this town. This town has to open up for the, more of the work of God that is to be done. More. We have to pray. We have to pray next week in the morning. I will be speaking so much about prayers and what God expects us to do in this town. How we need to open up this town by prayer. There are people who feel like praying. That might be your work. Until Wombe, oxygen you at home. And all of us have different areas. For me, when I teach, you hardly miss me go out and evangelize. My, my area of work is to disciple somebody, grow and release. That does not mean that I should not go out to do some evangelism. But every one of us has a specific area that God has called us to. Which if you do that thing that you are asked to do, you yourself you even feel fulfilled. And it's my prayer, even as you come for prayers like this daily, especially some of us who are very consistent, uh, you, you, you also pray in that area. That area. Lord, let me be impactful. See, when Jesus comes tomorrow and you stand before him, the big question you ask is, what did you do with what I sent you? <laughs> As you pray, you can know. And let me say this. If you are fulfilling what God has called you to do, even in your work that you do every day, you will succeed. Mungu atafungua milango. Watu anatafuta. The Bible where we are, I was telling us, people are really looking for other things. I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. If you do what he tells you to do, he will know how to give you what you want. 
uta utasumbuka kutafuta kwenye mahitaji shida ni kama umeweka kando kile ambacho unataka ufanye na wewe unakimbia tu na vitu zako as long as he is there so i want us to pray that god will help us fulfill the purpose for which we are on earth and if you don't even know i've already told you it begins by just doing what the church is doing the church helps you to understand what the word of work of god is but at some point as you continually praying learning the word of god you will fit somewhere utakuna mali unajikuta umeingia kile ambacho kinakutosheleza how would i put it something that satisfies you kuna kitu utafanya hata katika kanisa and then when i say this is my place na unajitolea kabisa kufanya kwa hivyo i am not here to preach let's let's have some time to pray